Hello there, RJB here from RJB TV. And we're going to continue where we left off in the very last episode, where we started a series between 458 against Rabbit. In the very first match, Rabbit proved to be. Oh, wait, I selected the exact same replay by accident, just let me leave. I, I just. Like, this happens. Oh, this happens. I selected the exact same replay that we casted in the previous video, so just let me uh, go to the next one. I mean, this happens, this happens. I'm gonna keep this in because I think this is quite refreshing to have a mistake like this happen. Alright, so now we're going on to game number two. In the previous match that I just loaded up and didn't intend to load up, Rabbit lost against 458. He defended very well in the very first 10 minutes, but after the first 10 minutes, 458 just ramped up the multitasking. <laughs> he won pretty um, convincingly. It wasn't fast, it wasn't a fast win, but he slowly and surely chipped away at Rabbit's defenses and got himself the victory. Rabbit here on the name Jun. 2354287 and here we've got 458 on the name 458 on the Protoss against the Terran. And once again he does a an opening here that we don't often see from a corner spawn, but which 458 seems to be doing more frequently from a corner spawn in the year 2020 and 2021. And that is he starts off with two gateways there. Um, before a Nexus, while on a corner spawn location. Usually 458 used to go for different dual orders. Um, namely, he went used to go for a Nexus first when he's on a corner spawn. Because it's harder to rush your Terran opponent when you start with two gateways. On a corner spawn and on a middle spawn location. Because the distance to your opponent is longer and bigger from corner to corner than it is from middle spawn to another middle spawn or a corner. But here he gets his Nexus though, he's got two Zealots on the way, so it's Nexus, what you start with, then a pylon, two gateways, pylon in the front, then two Zealots queued up, a Nexus and a third pylon. Whereas Rabbit here is actually, once again, um, kind of playing into the two gateway opening from 458, pretty much like last time. Pretty much like the previous game where Rabbit also started off with a command center first into triple barracks. Which means of course that his uh, first marines are going to be delayed. And maybe that is the exact reason why 458 starts out with the two gateways instead of going for a nexus first. Because he deep in his mind knows what Rabbit is going to do. He knows that Rabbit is going to go for a command center first. And with that command center first, he'll have less units to defend himself with, and that is why 458 goes for the early Zealots. But he split his Zealots up, and that kind of plays into Rabbit's defensive ability, because now Rabbit can get a bunker up in the back, maybe get a bunker up before and in front of his barracks as well, to help him defend against these four Zealots that are now on the way. Although I must also say that he doesn't have that many Marines out yet. There's four Zealots and about six Marines. Five, he has six Marines in total, more are on the way, but so are more Zealots on the way as well. Got one cannon coming up there in the front to defend himself, and now he's going to go in with the Zealots as well to go for an attack. But this bunker there in the back is very well placed, and he can micro around his barracks and to his bunker very easily and prevent loss of his unit. So he's going to be pretty fine, he's going to be pretty fine indeed. And there's not a lot of stuff that 4 8 can do with those Zealots, because the bunker, as I said before, is very well placed, and it protects this entire section here. So it's, yeah, it's difficult for 4 8 to do something. That's why he's walking around the edges of Rabbit's base, looking for something to attack and maybe, maybe find himself an opportunity to get those marines to move out and overextend and get caught by the Zealots. But Rabbit is not gonna make a mistake like that. He's got good control and he's got a very good brain in his head. He's got a very good mind. He knows what to do and he's not gonna make those mistakes. He's not gonna make those mistakes that are gonna give 458 the opportunity to damage him and build himself an advantage. And 458 once again goes for triple nexus for gas. He's really been changing his build orders in this set. He usually always goes for two gas 
uh, double nexus into fast robotics, but this time around it's a completely different thing. Got some zealot aggression there going on, but oh, rabbit there overextends a little bit, goes around the zealot. The zealot's there, of course, too small in number to actually fight back. Oh, what he can at most do is kill some marines, kill some SCVs, and reduce the amount of marines that rabbit has. The rabbit's gonna win this one very, very convincingly. Also, he just used his scan, but I don't... I'm not sure what he used his scan on. We see a huge circle here, so he probably scanned the main. And there at the main, he saw... A, not a lot of tech progression. We have a very slow Citadel of Dune. Three cannons there in the front. Actually, a lot of Marines here, and he knows where Fort of Eight is located on the map. So you might actually see him attempt to break through those cannons, and I really do think that with this amount of marines and medics, he should be able to do it. He should be able to break through, though the medics are on low energy, and that might actually that might actually reduce his chances of getting through. Maybe he's going to wait for more marines to arrive here and then try to break through, although he's going to have to be fast because we have more units on the way from 458 here. Well, actually, nothing is on the way except a shuttle. He's not making more cannons there, he's relying on three zealots, three cannons to defend himself. Rabbit isn't going for it, he's playing this kind of defensively. He has the units here, but he's playing it very defensively. He's going for triple starport, he's got two factories, he's getting a fourth command center already. Both players really going really hard on the economy build order. He's pulling back, he didn't even check. So that's the one thing, he didn't even check if he could try to break through, and honestly he could have tried, he could have gone for it, and he would have broken through without a doubt. But he didn't go for it. Great scan timing there from Rabbit, sees the shuttle, about 640 is this when he used the scan. It's kind of, it's kind of like, he, he knew the timing based off of what he saw here when he scanned this section there in the back, he saw that there was no support bay, no citadel of the dune, so he knows that Rabbit is going to have a very delayed... Um, Fort of Eight is going to have a delayed shuttle drop moving out. Now, Zealots are moving out. Rabbit is going to fight back, but he gets surrounded. Marine there gets cut out. Going to kill the Marine there, but at least Rabbit knows it's on the way. He's got a pretty strong choke there being built. It's under construction. There's an opening there on the top side, though, that he can walk through. Reaver's going to land there on the low ground. Zealots are going to try to tank and allow the Reaver to land. Reaver is going to try to shoot on something. Scarabs are moving, Scarabs are exploding, kills one tank, the other tank stays alive, this turret goes down, tank number two also goes down, he loses both, no one of his reavers, one of them stays alive and very little HP, now the raids are on the chase, they're gonna try to find that shuttle and kill it, but the shuttle is flying away, and upgrade, shuttle speed upgrade is finishing just in time, shuttle makes it out alive, reaver stays alive as well, and fort of eight, despite not really hurting Rabbit all too much, does kill two tanks and some marines, at least he gets something done, but he doesn't really get anything significant done, which is of course what he wanted to do, he wanted to really hurt Rabbit, but instead it's just a little bit of scratching and clawing at the outer layers of Rabbit's defenses, but not really anything significant, which I've already said twice. But he's going for a very fast um, star gates. Got an observatory there on the way as well. For the raids, he needs observers for the cloak raids because he's got the control tower added on there, which leads me to believe he already has. Or he's getting cloaked right now. He didn't have it finished yet, but he is getting cloaked to defend himself against those shuttle draws. But he's moving out. Rabbit spotted it with his marines, so the raids are on the way to snipe those shuttles. He's gonna have to alert it on the bottom corner, and I think that's exactly what he's gonna do. Reaver's there on the low ground, Reaver's shooting on the marines. One Reaver goes down, Reaver number two is gonna take it down by the raids. Zealots are on the chase. Scarab there does, doesn't hit anything, so yeah, the Reavers go down. He's gonna go for the turrets now instead. But it looks like Forbidden didn't quite manage to damage Rabbit once again. This is very reminiscent of the very first match, the previous match, where Rabbit defended very easily. Shuttle comes in! Ooh, what a tricky timing! What a tricky timing! What's inside the shuttle? There's two Templars in there. Rabbit is running away. Templars are alone on the low ground. Templars are gonna storm. Templars are hitting pretty hard there, and yeah, he hits a lot of those STDs. Goes down for about 85 or maybe 80 to 53. Very tricky, but once again, very simple setup. It's all about the timing. The setup itself was very simple, but the timing was tricky. He had a feeling that Rabbit would pull away his raids. The moment Rabbit drops his guard, 
he goes in and hits him with a punch. And the punch hits pretty hard, but is it hard enough? Is it hard enough? Did he hit him hard enough? He's got 58 SCVs, he's pretty, pretty well off in terms of defense. He's got a pretty strong choke there, a couple tanks there as well. He's got some marines and bunkers, some tanks, and a lot of raids to defend himself against those shuttles. So all he has to do now is keep scanning, keep himself up to date on when those shuttles are leaving the base, and he should be completely fine. But one thing we know about 458 is that his shuttle draw play is very, very accurate and strong, and he has some pretty tricky... Timings, not per se tricky setups, but tricky timings. Very good use of the Valkyrie there, moves it out into the front, starts firing on the shuttles. Now, Valkyrie and shuttles are. Valkyrie's on Razor on the way to intercept, the loads are on the bottom corner because he feels forced with a low of concerning the Razor on the way. So now it's just Zealots attacking, Zealots killing tanks with the splash damage. Goes for the bunker, the bunker there are gonna stay alive because there's Razor defending it and an SV repairing it. And this drop from 4 to 8 doesn't achieve anything once again. And this time around, there's no follow-up shuttle to trick Rabbit into dropping his guard. So Rabbit is recovering really quickly, really nicely, and solidly, lifting up his barracks, which means he feels very, very safe. He doesn't feel the need to make another wave of Marine to defend himself. He's feeling confident with what he has. And I do think he is justified in feeling confident with what he has. Now, 458, one of his big weaknesses is not very quickly building a very big base. He's now finally adding on more Stargates. He's the kind of player who really focuses on making units, sending out attacks, instead of really building massive bases all over the map. He likes to keep up the pressure. Good use of his Corsairs there, but the race there have... Well, they have Cloak and the Observer's too far away, so the Corsairs do go down. Small little misplay there from 458. He's got more Corsairs on the way. They're back at home. But air upgrades on the way as well, so he's going for carriers without a doubt. He's got the fleet beacon there on the bottom side. He's adding on another Stargate there as well. So we can, I think he's going to fill out this entire portion there with more Stargates. And he's going to switch over into carrier play. He's keeping those shuttles outside of vision. The barracks there almost gave away the position of the, the shuttles. He's got Valkyries there on the bottom side. He's got an observer there as well. It's giving him a pretty good amount of vision. Zell there on the top side also giving him a good amount of vision. Rabbit also himself has great vision as well to defend himself with. Now he's flying straight into Valkyrie. He's going to have to unload there on the side of the base. He unloads a lot of units, while mostly Zealots. The Templars can take it down immediately. Zealots not really killing much. The bunker there on the bottom side is taking some fire from those blades, but the blades don't tear through the bunker walls, and the bunker walls are going to stay up just fine. Takes down one turret there and nothing else. Bunker there on the bottom corner, also still alive, they're gonna get repaired. Rabbit not gonna let it burn down because he has realized the importance of that one bunker there on the bottom side. Yeah, Rabbit is growing bigger, he's almost maxed out, only about 8 supply away from maxing out. His base is almost also completely filled out, and his upgrades are in a pretty good state. Got 1-1 one, one on the tanks, 1-1 one, one on the air, though no, air is still on 0-0, zero, zero, whereas 4 of 8 is 1-0-1-1-1. One, zero, one, one, one. For his air, 0 1 1 for his ground. He's only got two forges, so he's getting weapon and shield. He needs the shields for his carriers. He's getting armor and weapon for air for his carriers, of course, as well. Apparent another drop and a frontal attack, I believe. He's going for the double. double trouble. Flies over the front, but unloading Zelop on top of the tank, and yeah, he's behind enemy lines, but his drop. Oh, Templars are getting close to the SCV storms. He got in. He got in, kills about 20 or 30, not exactly sure how many workers Rabbit had, but he's down to 64, he got hit, didn't get hit too hard, but at least he got hit, at least he got a little bit, I want to say slowed down, but <coughs> he didn't actually get slowed down, he's perfectly fine on 64 SCVs, he's perfectly fine, and now all the SCVs that he lost are replaced with units. Now, Rabbit is playing very, very, very heavy on the Valkyries. He's got a group of 10, a group of 10, he's got 20 Valkyries, and he's got almost no tanks at all. He's got like 5 in the back and 6 in the front, so 11 tanks in total in his entire base. 22 Valkyries in total. He knows carriers are coming in the near future. He knows they're coming, but... When? That is the question. When is Forvate going to switch over into carriers, or is he going to switch over into carriers at all? Is he going to stay with 
his current configuration of Corsairs and Shuttles. Ooh, Corsairs fighting against the Valkyries, but the Valkyries are way too damn strong. Although he's gonna fly in at the same time, although no, Rabbit notices just in time. And he does get to unload most of his units there in the bottom corner, but they don't really pose much of a threat once again. Although, as I said before, there's not much ground army for a Rabbit. <coughs> Did Rabbit invest too much into his Valkyries? He's got so many Valkyries, but no ground units. And I think 458 knows exactly this fact. Because he saw, when he just flew in, he saw the amount of Valkyries. Might have also seen the amount of raids, so oh, he storms, so yeah, he definitely knows the raids are there. He knows that Rabbit has pretty much only air units that can shoot into the air. So I actually don't expect him to switch over into carriers anytime soon. He's gonna stay with a very big amount of Corsairs, because Corsairs are great against raids and Valkyries. And Shuttle Drops, although the amount of Corsairs he has, kind of like what Rabbit is doing with his Valkyries, the amount of Corsairs he has means his ground army is going to be rather small. He's got 84 probes, maybe... Nah, he's fine on probes because he's mining a lot of gas there on the side. So he's fine on probes. Goes in from the front, going to take down that wall there. Going to unload behind the wall at the same time as well. Zealot behind the wall, Zealot in front of the wall, it's a flank attack. Tanks are switching up. The Zealots in the front are actually not attacking. Oh no, a little bit of bat. Uh, that wasn't very cleanly played by 458, but 458 is finally breaking through that front depot wall. He's getting in between the factories, and the rabbit is finding himself in a world of hurt because he doesn't have a ground army. He doesn't have a ground army. I mean, he has a ground army, but it's so small that it's basically not there at all. And while it is happening, drop him from the bottom side, drop him from the bottom side. Valkyries not responding. Valkyries are. Killing not in... Ooh, the Templars went down just in time. A little bit of luck there for Rabbit and his Valkyries were on the correct location. <coughs> but now that the rays have gone down, a Rabbit knows that he doesn't have to replace them, so he is re um, building tanks instead of more rays. And I think he also lost a couple of his Valkyries. So he has more tanks now. He has 59 SCVs, so he did lose about 2 or 5. I think at 64 SCVs, now he's got 59. He lost about 5 of them, which of course means he can build another 2 tanks. Valkyries defending the tanks. They're up on the high ground. Very well played. Tries to fly around there with the shuttles. Unloads up on the hill to kill the tanks, but the tanks get picked up into the dropship very quickly. So 458 now is actually struggling to harm Rabbit, because Rabbit is switched over into a very big tank army. He finally has a lot of tanks. He threw away a bunch of his Valkyries to open up supply space, and now he actually has a fighting force on the ground, instead of just a fighting force in the air. Got some results successfully up on the hill there. That is exactly what he has to do, but he comes from the bottom side as well, flies into Valkyrie. Templar reloads, Templar's gonna storm, Templar misses the storm by a very tiny little bit, and Rabbit keeps his worker force alive. The workforce is alive, the Zealot's on the side, killing his stuff, which isn't too beneficial for him, but I don't really think he cares that much about it, as long as he has those, as long as he has those Valkyries on the side, he should be fine defending himself against the shuttle drops that keep coming. Of course, there's on the hunt for Valkyries because he has to kill the Valkyries in order to allow his shuttles to unload up on the high ground. If he doesn't kill the Valkyries, his shuttles are going to keep getting killed and those tanks up on the hill are going to keep threatening him. Another drop there, very small drop on the bottom side. The Valkyries are still on the drop path, flies in. He knows it's coming, he knows it's coming. He starts redirecting, he kills the shuttle very quickly. The shuttle is not alone the Templar. Now the Valkyries are fighting against the Corsairs, but the Corsairs are taken down a little bit too fast. And now 458 is in trouble because Rabbit is fully operational. He's running on full steam. He's got Goliaths now as well. And we don't see any carriers from 458 in the near future. He still has to just rely on gateway units. Got a lot of gateways. I think that's about 10. Then we have about another 17, 19 gateways in total, comes through with a frontal force attack, storms on the high ground, great storms on the high ground, takes down most of the tanks on the high ground, but the storms do run out, a couple tanks on the high ground stay alive, the Kuzma on the low ground getting taken down by the tanks on the high ground, and the Zealots also get taken down by those units 
as well. And a lot of tanks here, very far away on the bottom side of the map, very smartly placed. Basically, his entire army was very split up, but it's very good for Terran because it means the Zealots just don't get on top of all the tanks immediately. It's actually pretty damn good to have a good tank spread when you're a Terran. He tries to get his tanks up on the high ground there. The goons are pushing in, gonna try to take down whatever there is, but he's not really succeeding. More units coming out from the base, gonna try to get them on top of everything he can. Got some tanks there up on the high ground. It's only one though, it's gonna get taken down by... The Dragoons? Dragoons are missing a couple too many of their shots. Does take it down, drop them from the top side. Top side drop there, not gonna it's gonna get intercepted. The Aquas are on the way. Ready to take down the shuttles. Shuttles are alone. The Templar. Templar is there on the scene. Templar's gonna walk closer. Doesn't get the storm. Rabbit target fires it manually. Unseizes his tank so he doesn't splash his own STDs. And yeah, Rabbit is playing this one very well. But his units on the middle, they've got cleared out, and 4th of 8 is immediately building new cannons on the middle to buy himself some time. Whenever Rabbit moves out, he has to kill the cannons on the middle first. So 4th of 8 playing it very quick now. He's focusing as hard as he can because he doesn't want to lose. But for Rabbit's army with tanks, is pretty damn strong. Pretty damn strong, and I think he's about fully upgraded as well. Yeah, 3-3 three, three on the upgrades, whereas 4-5-8 is on 0-3-3. Three, three. Comes in. That's a lot of tanks there. That's a lot of tanks, but also a lot of gateway units coming in. But the Corsairs in the air, of course, do make his gateway army smaller than it should be. Corsairs against Valkyries. Who's going to win this fight? Valkyries, of course. Valkyries win it very, very convincingly. And now Rabbit there moving into the middle with his very strong, fully upgraded tank army. As 458 is still lagging behind with his armor upgrades on his ground forces, and he's not getting it either. He's still focusing on his air upgrades. Still no carriers on the way, just Corsairs, Disruption Web is un being researched, Bottle Drop there flying over the top side of the map, he is consistently dropping, but Rabbit is consistently defending himself very well against exactly those drops. This game, Rabbit is not allowing 4 of 8 to get the better of him, he's instead playing this very resilient. 4 of 8 is moving his army into the middle. Goes in for the attack, is actually getting pulled into the attack, has to storm as fast as he can. Good storm there, but only one storm, two more Templars, three more Templars are on the way, are gonna... This is not gonna be enough. Great storms there, kills a lot of tanks, reduces the amount of units he has, but there's simply too many of them to really have those storms make a difference. Drop comes in for the top side, drop doesn't get intercepted, drop is going in undetected! Starts to storm, storms on the SVs and kills all the SVs on the minerals. Well, actually, four uh, rabbit did pull about 12 of them to safety, but that drop hurt him pretty badly. He wasn't paying attention. He was focusing on five on the middle. Now he's pulling his Goliaths back. Gateway units come from the base into the middle, going for the attack. Horses are being sacrificed to open up supply space. Dragoons are keeping their distance from the tanks. Goliaths pulled into the dragoons. Dragoons, of course, gonna beat those Goliaths into submission, and yeah, Rabbit pulls back his Goliaths, and he's going for a full out. Ooh, he's maxed out on 39 SCVs, he's gonna have a very big mech army. Very big mech army. He's making some new SCVs at the same time, though, but he's not gonna have a very big amount of SCVs. Drop comes here for the bottom side, drop comes here for the top side, two drops at the same time. The drop on the top that is a distraction drop, the real drop is on the bottom side. Shuttle makes its way in, Shuttle lands from the low ground, Shuttle lands next to the temp SVs, and he storms once again. Kills all the SVs on the minerals, and only 14 are left alive, but there's a very big tank army on the middle. Very big tank army on the middle. The question now becomes, will this army of tanks be enough to kill 458, or will 458 push back and still win this game? Even though the odds weren't looking favorable for him, Oh, his tanks are not sieged up, and his tanks are running into the Zealots, and the Zealots are now on the chase. Tanks in the back are sieging up, tanks in the front are pulling back. Valkyrie's going to the front there to keep those dragoons away. Temples are ready to storm all the whatever he can. He's penetrating into the tank line, into the Goliath line, but there's so... Ooh, he's got such a good surround on the middle that the gateway mass, the gateway army from 458, which is lacking armor upgrades, is getting torn to stretch really, really quickly with another wave. The fact that 4th of 8 has so much money, so many probes, he can keep producing and producing and producing, and hopefully, 
reduce Rabbit's mech army tiny bit by tiny bit every single wave, considering Rabbit is so poor. He's got 33 SCVs, he's making a lot of them with his four command centers, but it's taken him quite a while to actually get them all back to work. He actually misclicked as well. See, a lot of SCVs they are running about not working. But his army is big, his army is massive. He's got four vessels there as well. Setting up his tank, building... Oh, another drop there arrives on the scene. This drop is gonna hit him. It's gonna hit him. He dodges the storm. Barely there, though. Is there another? No second Templar there inside the shuttle. So Rab is still in very good health here. Drop comes in on top of the tanks. Zealots are being blocked by... Oh, Zealots. A beautiful EMP there as well. Loses his army pretty damn quick. Basically, the Zealots tried to get on top of a single tank, but the turret in front of the tank was blocking the Zealots from hitting the tank, and his Zealots just kind of clumped up and killed themselves, and the EMP most certainly assisted them in doing it. So yeah, he's getting carriers now, but he's, it might be a little bit too late to get carriers, and Rabbit's economy is now also doing pretty good. He's not really mining gas, because he already has a lot of gas in the bank, so he's mostly just focusing on getting minerals back into the tank, to produce more siege tanks, more goliaths, and whatever he needs to pull, to push through, and he's pushing through really successfully. 458 knows he done goofed up, and Rabbit there calls the victory, 458 calls GG, and Rabbit evens up the score to 1-1. One, one. With a very hard fought, and very close, battle between these two powerhouse players. The 458 couldn't quite get the victory for himself in game number two, despite the fact that he's ten times richer than Rabbit is at this exact moment into the game. But he played it very well, he almost had it, he almost achieved greatness. But Rabbit managed to keep the, the last group of his SCVs alive when it mattered the most, and the fact that his amount of SCVs was very small, his army became very, very big. And the 4 of 8, well, he should have switched over into Carius earlier. I really think he should have gone for Carius earlier into the game. He really relied on Corsairs to fight against the Valkyries for way too long, and he didn't achieve any results with those Corsairs at all at any point. In other games, I've seen him achieve results with those Corsairs, but not this one. Anyway, thanks for watching. It was RJB for RJB TV. I'll do part number 3 sometime this week, and I hope you will be back. I hope you will return to watch it together with me. Have a good day, and see you next time.